And good morning and welcome to the Coach's Corner with Coach John Reedaboo on 93.7 FM The Mix. I'm Nathan Lambert, and in the booth with me this morning, I have Mr. Riley Price and Coach John Reedaboo. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. You know, obviously last night, tough loss for the Warriors up at Concord. Let's talk about that first first quarter, because kind of things kind of went sour fast. Yeah. How you know? Talk about the 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 coming out. I mean, beautiful night. Beautiful on homecoming for them, and then then kind of coming out there and having the early struggles. Well, mom said there would be days like this, so <laughs> um, uh, it was right from the get go. I mean, even in warm ups, coaches were commenting that we uh, seemed a little flat, and uh, that was confirmed at the very beginning of the game. So you know, they have a a really good kicker who didn't kick last night. They had a second kicker. And that second kicker could also put it in the end zone. And so uh, uh, right from the get-go, the kickoff went in the end zone. We're starting at our 20, which is not the greatest field position. Especially when you have an asset like, you know, Tinky and Bontrager back there that can really, you know, give you some good field position. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they're definitely a weapon. And we have encountered teams that, uh, you know, won't kick to them. But that usually results in shorter kicks or bloop kicks, and, and we get good field position. That's the way it's gone all year. We do know where we're going to encounter some really good kickers as we go along, and they're probably going to put it in the end zone. So uh, we're going to have uh, a long field uh, a lot of times, and that's a weapon. I mean, that's something for high school football. If you've got a kicker that can put it in the end zone, you know, odds are they got to drive at 80 yards, and, and that's very difficult to do. But um, – we had a short run on first down, uh, second play, short pass play, and Mason Shoemaker uh, was tackled on that play and hurt his shoulder and uh, tried to play through it. And on third play, we had a long pass, and um, you could tell it didn't come out right, and he was holding his shoulder coming off the field, and uh, that was the end of his night. So on the third play from scrimmage, uh, we lost our quarterback, um, which made things difficult the rest of the way. Uh, not that we're not prepared. I mean, we have a JV quarterback, and uh, Derek Bontrager has practiced in, in kind of a wildcat kind of situation, um, and they've they've practiced for that situation right there. But uh, it's a little different when you uh, you're out there on Friday night and it's actually flying at you. And, but, and against a, a quality NLC opponent oh, too, yeah. that that is. You know they're they're homecoming, so they're amped and they're ready to go. I mean that's that's kind of worst case scenario. Well, and you you watch the game. I mean they're they're very talented and athletic. Um, you know they held a Warsaw team to ten points, and three of those points was a forty six yard field goal, which is quite a poke. And so uh, their front seven's a real deal. I said that last year. I, I said it again this year that it's the best front seven I've seen around. And their secondary wasn't slow. I mean they reacted fast. Kids. Their their defense definitely plays as a unit. Yeah. I mean, they they all night long. It seemed like they were coordinated. Yep. on that side of the ball. Yeah, they were very aggressive, coordinated, fast to the football, physical. Um, it it was tough. It was tough. So uh, we line up for punt, and uh, our long snapper has been great all week. He kind of you know finally hit that stride of where he knows the feel, and he's just been snapping it great. And the very first snap. 10 feet over his head. I mean, it was just out of the blue, probably hype, you know, wanting to get down the field fast, that kind of thing. Um, luckily, we were able to fall on it for a safety rather than giving up the touchdown. And so it's 2 nothing after our first uh, series. Not, that's not the way you want to start. And so we line up for uh, a safety kick where you can punt or kick off, and we chose to punt and uh, made a nice punt. Difficult to handle, and uh, they they muffed it, and we get the ball back. And so we're back in business a little farther down the field, so uh, not looking too bad there at that point. And, and you know, you got to be telling your team, you know, yeah, you, the the safety hurts, but you now have field position. you got to go in. What do you tell your young quarterback that's about to go in and take his first NLC snaps? <clears throat> well, 2 nothing. That's that's not really a huge deal. I mean, you, you kick a field goal, you're ahead. So, um, yeah, you don't want to give up a safety. It's more of a mental thing that you gave up a safety. But, hey, okay, we didn't give up a touchdown, and we kicked it off and got it right back. And so that's a flip. That's a big flip. And so that was that was a positive in our, our case. Um, we went with Bontrager first. You know, we went with the senior and, and put him in there. And uh, so he comes in, and we run the ball, uh, tried to pass. 
they were in his face, tipped it, tried to pass again, and uh, sack. And he kind of fumbled the ball, and Tinky picked it up and got a little bit of yardage. But <clears throat> we got absolutely nothing out of, out of those uh, three plays. And so we're lined up for punt again. Good snap, good kick, and great coverage. I mean, tackled immediately. And, and that's one thing you can say all night, you know, the, the – <clears throat> After that, that errant snap at the beginning, the, the punt team actually had some really good coverage. Very, the rest very of the game. solid after that. Uh, coverage has been pretty good uh, most of the year. Um, you know, <laughs> it's not a good thing when your punt team is performing well, but uh, they've had their struggles earlier the, in the year, but uh, they solidified now. And it, it's, it's a pretty good operation. And, and again, minus that bad snap, I mean, they, they did pretty well. Um, so, you know, we, we punt away, and uh, Concord's first play, they tried to throw, and we got pressure all over, and uh, probably had him going to be sacked and tackled uh, our defensive lineman, but apparently they didn't see it, and uh, incomplete pass. Next play, handoff, 80-yard touchdown. I mean, second play from scrimmage for Concord, and, and that's just like, wow. And, and you mentioned to me before the game that that Thomas was uh... – a track runner, and that was evident after. Oh, yeah. I mean, he he had I a step hole in there. about twenty yards out from the <laughs> I end mean, zone. He he hit the afterburners quick on that, and he just looked natural out there. Long strides going down the field. I mean, <clears throat> he was the the epitome of the guy that you don't want to have to play against. No, uh, he's he along with Moon at, at the other number eleven at the other linebacker position. Uh, they're two well known sprinters in our conference, and you know, sectional, regional, state kind of guys, and so. We knew the speed. We just we left too much room, um, a little bit out of position, and that's all it takes for a, a guy like that. He hits it and he hits it hard, and boom, we're down nine to nothing after the PAT. And so, uh, not the start you want, uh, obviously. And so, you know, Concord wasn't exactly, except for the eighty-yard run, they weren't. You know, they seemed kind of out of it too. And I don't know what it was, but both teams seemed to be kind of wallering through in that first quarter and you know we try to get the guys hyped up and say the first team that wakes up and takes it to the other team is going to have the advantage and, and unfortunately that wasn't us um so kickoff return again put it in the end zone again so we're starting at our own 20 um short run by tinky but now we have the uh Kime in the the backup quarterback in and uh, uh try a long pass on the second play incomplete and then on the third play, he's hit as he throws, and it's picked off. And so they have the ball, short field, and first play from scrimmage, 30-yard TD. Boom. Just like that. And so now we're down 16 to nothing um, after the PAT. And, uh, uh, you know, we're trying to get the boys going. I mean, come on. you got to wake up. It, it's going to get ugly. Like, it, it was kind of like a shell shock moment there. It was. it was like boom, 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 and all of a sudden, yep. oh, my goodness, we're down 16 points. Yes, yes. And, and even then, as a coach, you're looking up there, 16 is not – Insurmountable. No, I mean, we've, we've not at all. We've scored 16 and a, and a half or a quarter before. If you've been around football long enough, you know sometimes things happen in, in a flurry, and then things settle out. And, you know, at that point, you know, all we need is a score. All we need is a score, and we're right back in it. And it changes the mindset, but um, at that point, you know, we're 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 imploring the guys to get going, and and really, there's not any panic or anything like that. Uh, there's disappointment, frustration, uh, but uh, at that point, you know, let's go. Okay, we we screwed up the start of the game, but let's let's go ahead and get show into that it. warrior grit that we talk about exactly. and, and move to the next play. Exactly, do your one eleven is what we, what you would say. Absolutely, and that's exactly <laughs> what I said on the field. I said. Quit. There's nothing you can do about that. It's next play. And one of the kids was wanting to ask about this certain play, and I said, you're thinking in the past. You, you can't do anything about that play. It's the next play that matters. And so, um, you know, we're kind of hung up on a couple things that happened earlier, and, and we're trying to get them redirected to the next play. So um, next kickoff return, we actually uh, are able to return it, and we get a nice return. I think it was out to the 32-yard line. Um, so decent field position for a start and first play from scrimmage tackle for a loss, uh, short run. There's kind of a theme here, uh, and then pass for a loss. I mean, absolutely nothing on offense. Uh, we punt away and, uh, this was one that they did get a decent return. We were right there and he kind of sidestepped and, and, you know, well, 
I, I will add though on that on that return, it did appear that there might have been some don't get pushing me started. in the back. Don't get me started. <laughs> appear, don't get me started. Appear is a right word there. <laughs> but so you know, how, what do you say to your defense in that point? You know, you're you're going into I believe this is later first quarter at this point. What do you tell your defense? You know, at that moment, bow your neck, bow your neck. You got to get a stop here. We got to stop something. And, and so they did that. Very first play, uh, we uh, stuffed the run. Uh, second play, sack. Third play, tackle. Uh, they ran a screen. It, it was a tendency. We were screaming, screen, screen, screen. And Peyton Sewell sniffed it out great and uh, made a tackle. And they're punting. So the, the defense rose up when we needed them to right then and there. And they have two punt formations. They have a regular punt formation and a quick punt. And they were in quick punt, and we, we recognize that. The trouble with quick punt is it's their offensive unit. So if you're anywhere in the midfield or on our side of the field, you got to play defense because uh, – you, you just never know at You that don't point. know. They'll go for it. Yeah. And so you, you got to play defense, and uh, they punted away, and, and it went in the end zone. But here we are at the 20-yard line again. So uh, all – all uh, uh, offensive series uh, from a kick uh, resulted in uh, coming out from the 20-yard line. So uh, we get the ball back, and uh, we have a, a decent run, some, some good yardage. Uh, we had a kind of a missed handoff. you got a, uh, two guys that have worked a lot together with Tinky running the running back position and, and Kaim at the quarterback. And uh, so we had a kind of a bad handoff there, short run, and then uh, we hit a pass and get a first down. Um, the next play, uh, he sees a hole, takes off, gets a little bit of yardage on a scramble. Uh, we threw a, a bubble that was uh, pursued on really fast, and so we got just a little yards. Uh, then the old penalty bug rears its head. We uh, It's a what we call look um, where the – they do the cadence and everything and clap, and then they look over. And it's to design to get the other team to jump off sides. Unfortunately, we, we were the ones that moved. Um, and uh, next play, incomplete pass, and uh, we're punting again. And I don't know if you remember this one, but there was a boomer. It was 50-plus. Yeah. And uh, I do remember this Derek one. Bontrager did a fantastic job of getting down the field. Peyton Sewell was there, too, but Derek tackled him. I mean, he... He had to catch it over his head going away from the direction he should be going, and Derek tackled him right there. So that was a flip of the field. That was a great play. There was a number of good punts last night, not <clears throat> only in distance, but also in the time it took to actually get there. I mean, R- Reidenbach really let his team be able to get down there to cover the punt. I mean, that was that was pretty spectacular by him last night. Yeah, that's the combination that you're looking for is good height so your coverage can get down there and then obviously the distance. And uh, your coverage has got to be good at getting there. Uh, you've heard the term <laughs> out-kicking your coverage. You know, if you have such a boomer, sometimes guys don't – can't get down there fast enough but we got guys uh at the gunner positions and and they know their job and and our punt is designed in three waves so you have your gunners in the first wave you have your guards and tackles that protect and then they release uh in the second wave and then you have your personal protectors they're the third wave and so that keeps you away from the big return and uh it works out pretty well for protection too as far as uh, as long as everybody does their job and, and everybody knows it. And like I said before, that, that unit's come along pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, you know, they get they got used quite a bit. Um, so that's where we are uh, as far as in the game. Uh, a nice punt. Uh, they come out with a different – I don't know if you noticed, they switch quarterbacks after the first yeah, series. Yeah, I, I was wondering, was that an injury or was that by design for uh, them? Uh, I didn't know what was going on at the time. Uh, later on learned that the, their quarterback had some kind of hand injury, and so he came out, and number five came out. and um, I would say it's safe to say he was more of a runner than a thrower. <laughs> um, but uh, Definitely you know, a different style offense with him, too. Yes, yes. I mean, and the formations they looked, looked a little different, they, and just yeah. overall offensive theme fake was Fake jet, different. and he would keep it, or fake handoff, and he would keep it. Um, so that was a little bit different. Um, he had a nice run, and then number eight had a nice run, and then, uh, you know, it, it's like they were just matriculating down the field, as uh, as they used to say. Um we had one play where we tackle them for a loss, but everything else was a, a gain for first down, and then they ran a slip screen kind of play for a 22 nothing lead. 
and so um, that's kind of kind of where it ended. Uh, we they they we had a kickoff return. Uh, Tiki had a nice return, got face masked, um, so we end up on the forty yard line. Um, we started moving the ball. We started moving the ball a little bit uh, down the field, and uh, uh, but uh, you know we couldn't couldn't get anything going, and uh, we punted, and it was a touchback. Um, and they, so they had to start at the 20. And then uh, we, again, the defense rose up, tackle for loss, almost picked it off. Tinky had a chance at a pick, and usually he comes down with that. Uh, they did get a first down, and then they fumbled on the next play. And so we get the ball back again. So they were giving us opportunities, and uh, um, it was that next series uh, before halftime um, where we had a long pass. We got a long pass down to Tinky inside the five and uh, we got stuffed twice and on the third one Kimes trying to make a play and they pick it off in the end zone so yeah, and I mean six inches to the right and that might be a touchdown might be yeah um, you know young kid first actions trying to make a play uh, you know we told him if it's not there give it and you know we'll walk away with three points and uh, you know he he you, you try to prepare yourself for that action, but once you get there, you know, it's it's all bets are off. And so he was trying to make a play, a young quarterback, and uh, so they get the ball back. And they drive a little bit, but we're able to hold, and it's 22 nothing at halftime. So how how big was that defense possession? We were talking about it up on uh, up in the, the booth. You know, with under a minute to go there, Concord driving, and to have your defense bow – at least that gives you a little bit to hang your hat on as you go to the locker room, right? Well, the kids know that they can stop them if they execute, you know, and they know they're able to, uh, you know, stop the bleeding, I guess you would call it, you know. And so, um, you know, between uh, uh, some mistakes on offense and, and some guys a little bit out of position on defense, I mean, we even though it was 22 to nothing at halftime, felt like, you know, this could be a lot worse um, if we come out the second half and, and – play hard the whole second half and maybe get a score on the board we might be in business um, that was the talk at halftime you know we do our adjustments each coach talks a little bit in there and um, hey you know we just got to execute better there's a couple things we need to do here and there and uh, let's come out in the second half and just play hard and see what happens and uh, fortunately it didn't go our way at the second half well, this has been segment one of coach's corner and when we come back, we will finish our conversation about the Concord game last night. And coming up, we have Dawson Schmucker and Hunter Kunish as our student interviewers today. This is the Coach's Corner Morning Show on 93.7 FM, The Mix. And welcome back to the Coach's Corner Morning Show we are getting ready to start segment two and wrap up the Concord game. Now, Coach, you said in the locker room, you know, the the, the halftime message was, let's go out and, and get a score. You know, even even down three touchdowns, you're, you're still able to, you know, kind of rile the troops up and, and begin the, the second half. Well, uh, you know, and you, you make your halftime adjustments and you take a look at what's going on and see if there's anything uh, – schematically that you need to fix or adjust and we talked about some of the things offensively that uh, they were taken away and what we could do to combat that and, and move the ball down the field um, <clears throat> obviously this is your chance to talk to your uh, quarterback that uh, is got thrown in trial by fire and uh, so this is a chance to, okay now let's take a clear look at what we're doing how we're doing it and then we had some uh, you know some other guys that were moving around a little bit we we were very banged up coming into this game. Uh, there was at least four starters that I didn't think we were going to have at the beginning of the week that ended up playing last night, but they weren't a hundred percent, and and it you know it showed. I mean, uh, the, credit to them they they gave uh, everything they had, but they just weren't up to par. And <clears throat> with a team like Concord, uh, that's uh, they get ex exposed real fast. And, and Concord Concord's such a deep team too, <clears throat> you know with. With with us, you know, there there's a, a step right now as we're building this program of the ones and twos. Yeah. With a team like Concord, your one twos and threes are are, are pretty pretty compressed. There, yes. There's not a huge drop. -off. Absolutely, and you know, you're talking about a school of 1,700 kids compared to 930, and so that's that's a big difference. Uh, it's 5A school, and um, 
uh, they got what 60 70 kids uh, out there on the sidelines and that's not even their freshmen so uh yeah it's a numbers game uh, a competition at each position and uh, like you said there's not as big of a drop when you go from ones to twos and evens to threes whereas for us you know it's it's a little different because you're dealing with smaller numbers but um you know that, that's what it is and you can only put 11 on the field at a time so you know you, you gotta you gotta press on from that but um Another thing that happened in the first half that we had to adjust at halftime is uh, we lost Reed Reidenbach. Um, uh, there were some shenanigans going on between him and one of the Concord players that built up to a point, and he just lost his cool, and uh, he knows that. Uh, he was very upset by it, and uh, unfortunately, you know, he was he was not able to play the rest of the game, and uh, we won't have him next week either. So Wow. Yeah, and so um, he's our punter. He was uh, the guy that was going to do all the kickoffs because uh, we're doing specialty kickoffs. Um, so he bloops and squibs uh, a little better than our other kicker. And so that was his job there. He was also going to play a couple different positions on defense, and he's also a slot receiver. So it, it, you're not replacing one guy. You're replacing about five guys. And so that took some adjustment. Um, you know, who's going to punt? You know who's going to who's going to kick off and all those things and so those are some of the things you have to talk about at halftime. Of course, you mentioned it was homecoming, so it's an extended halftime, so we had plenty of time to get around to everything. And um, you know, we talked about you know let's come out and, and let's play hard and and let's and really see. show that warrior grit. Yeah, right? yeah, and let's see what we can do. And uh, so we come out second half and we're kicking off, and uh, uh, our kick didn't really go where it was supposed to. Um, we do not want to kick to number one. Uh, every game that we've watched, he's had at least one big return, if not more, if teams keep kicking to him. And so our game plan coming in is we're not going to kick to him. We're going to make somebody else handle the football. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the way the kick went, it uh, took a big, huge bounce, and he caught it in the air and got a big return. Now, again, there might have been some questionable blocks on that. Um <laughs> Uh, but you know they don't call it, so it didn't happen, and uh, they got the ball in good field position and made short work of it, and um, seemed like that let the air out of us. At that point, it was like uh, you know trying to rally them, and uh, you know it just wasn't happening. So you know, coach, obviously in a in a tough spot there. What do you kind of look at your team there, and 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 we were talking about this too. There was there was times in which that you know something bad would happen and, and the team would kind of bow their neck and there was times where the team kind of I want their their body language was just kind of defeated. What do you kind of tell your team? Because there was a couple times where I, I saw you huddle up some players and just kind of like give them a like, hey, this is still football. This is still what you come to do. This is still what you come to play and love. How do you kind of instill that in your players going? through this second half well that's, I mean that's what you do I mean it's one play at a time you try to uh, build on uh, little things that happen well you know little victories kind of thing um, you know at that point everybody knows uh, once they got the lead built to uh, more than 35 points as a running clock um, so you know and there was numerous conferences and and calls uh, by the officials that took a lot of time in the second half, and so um, the that, the tempo of play was definitely off all it, night. It was frustrating. Uh, I don't the the game clock uh, or play clock didn't start uh, on time or right away like we're used to in every game. Um, like I said, there was many conferences, and then they would make a signal, and then they'd stop play again and come back and conference again and, and make move a, the ball, and move the ball, and and switch who they pointed at, and uh, you know, I, I I don't want to be that guy that uh, complains about you know the officiating, but it, it really did affect us because it seemed like every time we had something going, uh, the old uh, penalty flag would come flying out, and it, it would just start us back. Uh, behind the sticks again that make it that much diff more difficult and that's what that's really what worked a lot on our kids mentality is every time uh, one step forward two steps back and um and, and when the cards kind of seem stacked against you it's hard to, to it kind of rile the kids back up. it is and then defensively um you know there was a lot of great plays made out there uh Dawson Schmucker one of our guests today uh he had a couple 
just sticks sticks <laughs> on number eight, who yeah. we know is a good good and, and a thick yeah thick guy. Yeah. Um, and so he is he is really starting to mature and grow into that position. You know, obviously we run in a new defense this year, and he's never played outside linebacker. He's always been a DB, and so he's really starting to get a feel for it, and, and it showed and played really well. Uh, Peyton Sewell was bopping in and out of inside linebacker, outside linebacker, and you're always going to get great effort from him. Um, uh, there were some other guys that uh, Derek Bontrager, Hunter Tinky, I mean, just flying all over the field, making you know form tackles or, or you know chasing a guy down and uh, just really making some plays on the field. Um, so you know, there's guys out there working hard and 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 playing with heart and grit and uh, you know there's some guys that are they're playing but they're hurt and they they're you know just a step slow or or can't fight off a blocker and those kind of things and then you add in the other factor of you know there's a few big runs that were finished off with uh, uh, DBs uh, getting a jolt from behind and and so you add all that up and that's what you get is a a lopsided uh, loss. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, you mentioned Dawson Schmucker has never played outside linebacker before. Uh, you know, it was definitely the the beginning of the year. Um, you can tell there was a little jitters. He's working away, but he's really come into that position. I mean, I would have never have guessed that he's never played that before. I, I wouldn't have either. I mean, he kind of has a nose for the football. He really does. Well, he that's really does. one thing we noticed about him as he developed and came through is that uh, he – he has a nose for the football. He would come up with interceptions and and batting the ball down and things like that at times in practice. That you know we knew, you know once he gets grows into his body that he, you know we got to find a place for this kid. And uh, going into this year, he kind of grew into his body a little bit more. His brother was a linebacker, inside linebacker, and Dawson was always a little bit smaller than his brother. But then he hit a growth spurt, and so um, even last year he was you know getting a lot bigger than for his senior year you could see it work in the weight room his legs a lot thicker and then you know it's it's the mental of knowing what's expected of you and 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 recognizing what's happening and and uh like i said he's he's starting to come into his own and starting to feel what that position uh what he's supposed to do and Peyton Sewell on the other side same thing i mean we've had to switch him back and forth uh, because of injuries and things like that but it, he's pretty solid out there too and um, he, he was dealing with all night long is uh, they have a fullback uh, you know that's lined up uh, behind the guard and, and will go in motion and, and try to kick you out and you know he was getting kicked out by that guy a lot and we just had too big of a gap there um, and there's other positions that are supposed to close down over the top of that when that happens and, and we just weren't getting it done. Well, this has been segment two of the Coach's Corner. We have just wrapped up our conversation about the tough loss to Concord last night for the Warriors. When we come back, we will talk with Dawson Schmucker, who we were just speaking about, and then Captain Hunter Kunish. This is the Coach's Corner Morning Show on 93.7 FM The Mix. And good morning and welcome to segment three of the Coach's Corner Morning Show with Coach John Ritabu. In the booth, we have a very special guest, Captain Hunter Kunish. Welcome. Thank you. Now, Hunter, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm a senior. I've been playing football since the fourth grade. Um, I didn't do any other sports before football. Before football, I played soccer for... I don't know, five years, and then that's pretty much it. You uh, you also have a sibling on the team? Yeah, my little brother, he plays football. I, I, I like how you pointed that out immediately, my little brother. Yeah. Oh, well, he is a little brother compared to him. Yeah, uh, uh, small. Mason, that's his name, is a defensive back, wide receiver, and uh, Hunter, obviously, is uh, one of our offensive linemen and defensive linemen. Um Hunter, uh, talk about the positions you played, and uh, I know you've played a couple on offense and a couple on defense, so let's go ahead and start with that. So coming into high school, I'd played center since Pee Wee, and then my junior year, I switched to tackle, and then this year, I'm playing guard, and then on defense, I played end for a long time, and tackle, and then now I play nose. You know, 
I, I, I had the uh, fortunate opportunity to coach you a little bit, and you were, you've you now gone from center to tackle to guard. Which one's your favorite? Oh, guard's definitely my favorite. I like pulling. You like pulling. And that, yeah. That's why he's at guard. I mean, uh, in this offense, you need your most aggressive uh, mobile, and he's one of the leaders when it comes to sprinting amongst the linemen. He takes pride in that. He, he doesn't like to get beat by any other lineman and can give a lot of our what we call our mid-skill, middle-skill, big-skill guys. Uh, he, he can run faster than they can. So have a mobility at that guard spot, and like you said, pulling. It's very valuable to have a guy like him there, especially. And one thing that I remember from him is he was so coachable. I mean, you you teach him, you know, a new technique, and the next day he's running it by himself. Yeah, we wish we had uh, five Hunter Kunishes on the line because he knows what he's supposed to be doing and everybody else. And so he's definitely a, a leader. He's a captain on the team, but he's a leader on the on the line as well. So Kunish, tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, my mom. Well, it's just my mom, and then my sister is a gymnast. My brother plays football, and my mom helps out with the football stuff as much as she can, and then she works on her own time as well. I've known his mom for a while from Milford School, and uh, uh, she's a great lady that uh, has her hand full with these two boys, but uh, she does a really good job, and um, you know, Hunter is one of those guys that we can count on. Um, you know, as a senior, as a, and that's one of the reasons why he's a captain is uh, you can count on him to do the right thing, be there, be where he's supposed to be, know what he's supposed to do, and and uh, help the younger guys out. So, Hunter, what other sports do you play? Uh, I don't play any anymore. I used to play soccer, but I got out of that. Did you ever get into wrestling? No. Never did, huh? You, you know what's funny? Uh, Coach Reboo actually tried to get me into wrestling back when <laughs> I was in school, and I think I made it a whole week before I was like, ah, I don't think this is for me. <laughs> uh, so, Hunter, um, recently we've had uh, some movement because of injuries. Uh, yeah. You've played more than nose this year you've also uh last night had to move back to end yeah so i played in because of certain things weren't working out on the defensive line which moved the center our center cooper into nose and then our anchor which is our other defensive end back to sam linebacker and then last week i played quick guard which is opposite guard because of one of our players breaking their leg and then so I well I already knew everything how to play it but it was just different because I was doing the opposite assignment of what I was supposed to let happen rather than doing what's supposed to be done and that's so valuable I mean a kid that can just plug in and go that knows what to do I mean obviously uh, we've had some plug-ins here and there due to injury and things like that and so uh, somebody that knows what's going on and knows what to do can plug in and we can still run efficiently so hunter you said you're a senior here you know what what comes next on your horizon um it's not yet decided i already work in a trade so i can really pursue that as long as i want what's your trade uh, i do construction so i build homes nice is that something you want to do after? at least for a couple of years until i figure something else out or stick with it you know and and that's something too you know i i have a lot of friends that that came out of high school and that's what they went into and they're all owning their own businesses now it's a great trade to get into right everyone needs it done yep well hunter uh you know obviously uh not the result we wanted last night um speak as a player on uh where we're at as a team and where we need to go well we're coming up on a breaking point i guess you could call it we didn't really execute last night i mean there was certain stuff that could have been done that weren't done certain gaps that weren't filled, certain people that weren't blocked that should have been blocked, which were key blocks. So I figure we'll break through at some point, hopefully sooner than later. As a captain, what do you tell your team this week coming forward, getting prepared for a, a big game against Northridge at homecoming? Uh, they really just need to progress. They need to understand what they're supposed to do and just go do it. I mean, if you know what you're supposed to do, then – just do it. I mean, you don't even have to really block them. If you get in their way, that's good enough for everyone else. Now, now, Coach, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to hold your tongue real quick. What does Coach say all the time? There, there's a, a, a little saying, do your... Uh, 111. And he said that a lot on this show. You know, how, how does that go into your, your thought process as a captain of, uh, and, and just as a senior that's played a lot of football of, you know, kind of settling guys back down? 
Well, if you just do your job, then you don't have to worry about anything else, like someone else's job that they don't do. I mean, there's always a way that you can make someone else right, but that's really not supposed to happen. You're just supposed to do what you got to do, and that's it. Well, thank you for joining us this morning, Hunter. We will go to our second interviewee, Dawson Schmucker. All right, we have our second interviewee in the booth, Mr. Dawson Schmucker. Welcome. Hello. Now, Dawson, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, your your family, your, your parents, grade, your, your position, your, your brother, your sister, uh, and so on. I have I'm an outside linebacker for what was he obviously. Uh, never uh, played that position before, have you? No, this is my first year. What'd you play before? Uh, I was a corner, and I'm still a wide receiver on offense. So, Dawson, how how does that transition go? You know, I, I was a big lineman. My my biggest feat was I got to play fullback one time. How does going from a defensive back to a linebacker change things? Um, it's honestly more with the aggressiveness. Uh, also, like some, I still catch myself with. Uh, some habits I have from being a cornerback, like stepping back too far, or uh, worrying like or worrying about getting too deep uh, if it's a pass. Yeah. Um, so this year we changed defenses, and uh, your body has developed in the last couple of years. Uh, weight room work, and uh, you know your legs have gotten bigger, you've gotten stronger, um, and also your DB. Uh, training kind of plays well into the outside linebacker as well because there are times when you're in pass coverage. Uh, yeah. Um, Most of the time you're what? what? What's your pass coverage? Where are you going? Um, usually I'm in the flats. Uh, uh, last game I had to worry about two, like the running back and uh, someone in my flats, you know, wanting to stay above and not letting them have a big play or a big pass. Right, right. Um you also get a chance to blitz the quarterback from time to time. Oh yeah, that that was my favorite part. Uh, <laughs> that's what brought you. I, I wish everyone to, could oh, yeah. see the smile yeah. that just came yeah. onto Dawson's face. That's what brought him into. <laughs> oh yeah, I can play outside linebacker. I get to blitz a quarterback. So um, Dawson had a, a several, as we mentioned earlier in the program, several uh, uh, good plays uh, against their best player that kind of stood out on film. And uh, Dawson, how would you say your uh, rating as an outside linebacker from the beginning of the season to now is your understanding and how you're seeing things. Um, I say it's got, uh, improved a lot. I uh, in the beginning I could barely, no, I I didn't even get in my flats in the beginning. I didn't even really try and attack like the QB or blitz hard and stuff like that. Would it be safe to say you were kind of a little bit lost and feeling your way there in the beginning of the year and yeah, and now are you feeling pretty confident? Yeah, for the most part, yeah. You're, you're reading things and you're you're just reacting. And that's a fun mm -hmm. way to play football, isn't it? So when you know what you're looking for, you see it, or you react, and you just get to tee off on somebody. That, that's a great feeling, isn't it? Oh yeah. Now you had a injury earlier uh, in a couple in a few games this year. Let's talk about that. What happened? Uh, I fractured. I think it was yeah, it was the middle finger. It was uh, in the middle of my hand, and honest uh, for the. First three weeks, I didn't, I didn't even get it checked. I just played with it because I thought it was just a, I thought I thought I just uh, just a typical football, you know, bumps and bruises. Yeah. Just I jammed it or yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but then after I got it checked, I didn't realize how bad it was. Is and then they said it was already like when I got it checked, it was already like halfway healed. So I didn't have to wear it for too long. So. So you just you just work through it, and then you had to get uh, kind of a cast on it, mm -hmm. and then uh, what was that? Uh, was it last week when that came off, uh, it or was, this week? It was this week, yeah. This week it came off, and I I don't know if anybody said anything. I just noticed you were running around with nothing on your hand. I was like, wait a second, Dawson doesn't have a cast on anymore. So. Uh, we're starting to work him back into receiver a little bit more. Uh, uh, give us another guy out there, and uh, and Dawson actually has some uh, decent hands and and knows what he's doing out there. So it's a, a welcome help to that uh, that group. So Dawson, tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, well, my brother used to play for Wallace. Uh, Name him, Robert Schmugger. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he now goes to IU. Uh, he was able to see my first game that we played. It was pretty fun. That was. 
one of my favorite moments of the year so far. Um, did he give you critique? He did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what what else does a bigger brother do, right? That's true. <laughs> uh, and then also uh, my dad, which is uh, he's also a big inspiration for me. He he really like helps me like you know be kind to others and stuff like that. Just make me become a good person. Uh, I look up, I really look up to him uh, even uh, when I am playing football. And then anyone else? Um, my mom. I I love when I hear my mom in the stands. I can She's always loud, hear isn't she? <laughs> oh yeah, she's one of those loud moms. <laughs> oh yeah. They're, they're, we got some uh, great moms, and and they definitely uh, they they put it out there. It, it was funny last night. the The way the booth was set up is that there were some windows missing, so we were you know directly behind our stands. And there was a couple times I was getting some texts like, "Hey, there's some there's some loud parents there tonight." <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the problem with Concord when you're in that booth that you're right on top and and even on the sideline. I mean, most games you can't hear the crowd at all or anything. You can hear everything. I mean, they're right behind you, literally right behind you. So uh, that's a little bit different. Okay, uh, uh, Dawson, uh, you're a senior. This is your senior year. Uh, plans after high school? Do you have any? And and what is it? Uh, I want to become. Uh, I want to go into history. Uh, <clears throat> I want to be a history teacher. That's something I really want to be because I just like uh, like I'll be home and just watching it just because I just it's really enjoy. I enjoy it a lot, and I want to teach other people about it. Any particular time in history that you enjoy more than others or uh, a theme like U.S. history as opposed to world history? Is there anything that you like in particular? Um, I really like ancient history. Like uh, my one of my favorite is uh, uh, I can't oh, Alexander the Great. Uh, yes. One of my favorite people. He's he's awesome. I one love of, him. One of the great uh, empires and one of the great leaders. So uh, uh, conquer, right? Oh, yeah. That's what we need to do on defense is uh, conquer. So uh, great coming in and, and appreciate you coming in and talking with us. And uh, Dawson Schmucker is on the rise. His play is uh, increasing, and uh, he's going to continue to make an impact on this team as a senior. Well, thank you to Dawson and Hunter for our Segment 3 interviewees. This has been the Coach's Corner Morning Show on 93.7 FM, The Mix. And welcome back to the Coach's Corner Morning Show with Coach John Reedaboo. You're joining us here at the beginning of segment four as we switch our sights to homecoming next Friday at 7 p.m. against the Northridge Raiders. Now, Coach, you have kind of a, a, a big task, you know, coming from Concord to Northridge. Northridge, Northridge obviously has... Uh, you know, taking down Northwood as well as some quality teams that, that we were just talking about off air. You know, what goes into the preparation for this game? Well, Northridge is a pretty quality football team. Um, they are a very deep team. Um, they have uh, uh, really good numbers, and so they, are, they have good competition at every position. And uh, uh, their quarterback is... Uh, stepped into a very good quarterback position uh, from last year and and seemed to not skip a beat. Uh, their running back Miller uh, it was is very solid running back and he's last I knew he was on the shelf hurt and the second running back has come in and filled in uh, very well. Uh, they have some good receivers that go up and catch the ball and attack the ball and uh, you know they have some big boys on the line and so uh, offensively they look uh, pretty potent. And defensively, uh, they're they're pretty sound and and fairly aggressive and, and athletic, and so we're going to have our hands full. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so obviously, we, we we said that that this is going to be homecoming. How does that change things in preparation? This you week? know, homecoming used to be a huge deal. You had powder puff. You had. Uh, 
uh, capture the flag and all kinds of events. And we really don't have that stuff anymore. And so homecoming is not quite as distracting. Not, not the spectacle that yes, it used to be. It used to be very, very distracting. Now you do have the homecoming court and you do have a pep rally on Friday and dress up days. And we still do some neat things uh, with that. But uh, the main thing is, is, is making sure the boys, when they step out on that practice field, uh, it's all about football because the main focus and the culminating activity is that Friday night football game. And, and you know, one thing, too, that to, to talk about homecoming was not only is it going to be homecoming for Wallace C, it's also going to be homecoming for Chad Epley, the head coach of Northridge, as he actually played football with Riley and I, I, I believe a 2013 graduate, graduated uh, with my wife, you know, how does seeing a former player and getting to coach against him, how does that, uh, you know, transpire? Well, Chad was a very heady player when he played. Um, uh, you know, he he was a leader. Uh, and when he went off to college and played and then uh, out of college, uh, you know, started getting into coaching, uh, was down at Westfield. Um, Coach Wagaman, who uh, he played under and, and I coached under, uh, somehow found out through the grapevine that Chad might be uh, willing to move closer to home and grabbed him before we could grab him um, and pulled him up to Northridge. And uh, he did a nice job as assistant. And when Coach Wagaman decided to step away from Northridge as a coach, his, his first retirement, um, Chad <laughs> filled in and they were able to – uh, go to state that first year. Uh, one of those weird things where uh, the regular season was kind of ups and downs and the way they finished the regular season you would have never guessed but they uh, had some personnel changes and they got on a roll and lo and behold they're at the state finals and so uh, big first year. Uh, last year they backed that up with uh, a trip to the regional. Um, so uh, they have progressed well as far as uh, getting through the tournament. Um, they're definitely a very uh, sound team when it comes to competing in the conference. Um, they, like I said, they they have a new fil- field, a new facility, new high school. Uh, a lot of a lot of good positive things. Their enrollment. They used to be the smallest school in the conference. They used to be eight hundred and some kids, and and now I believe they're. They're probably around uh, 1,500 kids, um, and uh, really? yeah, they've, they've exploded. And, of course, you know the RV industry in town there. Uh, when you go up to Northridge and you see the extravagant scoreboard and uh, softball, baseball, everything's turfed, and they got a nice little uh, uh, locker room area and the stands, it, it's just a nice setup. And uh, you can tell that there's a lot of influx of money and uh People care about their their sports programs up there, and so uh, that that trickles out into the programs. And and you know they're uh, they're very uh, proud of their program, and they go out and, and play hard. And so you're going to be playing a team that's uh, sound on both sides of the football and in special teams. Uh, they got a good kicker. Uh, we're going to be facing another really good kicker. Uh, um, that's going to be uh, we're going to have to handle that field position situation. Um, and so, uh, you know, Chad, uh, seeing Chad, it's always good to see him. He, he's a good dude and, uh, you know, very happy for his success in his young career. Uh, but, you know, when the when the whistle blows, it's it's us Mortal enemies them. until yes. the, that, that final At, whistle yep, again. That's how it goes. You know, we, we just got done talking about Concord, and we're switching gears here to Northridge. What is the differences between these two teams? Like, what what does Concord do that that Northridge or sorry Northridge did that that Concord doesn't do, or or vice versa? Um, you know, I got to look at the film uh, it, based on what they did last year. They were pretty more pretty much a wide open throw the ball all over. Uh, you know, run the ball when they want to. Uh, and they had a pretty sound running back, so they spread you out and they throw it all over, and about the time you're trying to stop that, uh, they're rumbling down the field. And so uh, multifaceted, so you can't you know, say they like to run the ball more. Um, I would say Concord wants to run the ball more, um, whereas Northridge I, I think will put the ball in the air a lot more, but they're very capable of running it. Um, defensively, different scheme, um, but uh, – uh, how they approach things um you know be honest with you concord broke a lot of tendencies last night 
uh, their offense, you know, example is, uh, you know, when you look at tendencies in a game, uh, when they had trips formation, they ran into the trips formation. All last night they ran away from the trips formation. So those are things that you have to in-game adjust uh, to, you know, they just broke tendencies last night. And and that was something that, uh, you know, you go in expecting to see something and and that's not what you're getting. So against Northridge, you know, we're going to have to examine film, see what they do, what they like to do offensively and see what their uh, overall plan is on defense and see where we can attack it and uh, go from there. Yeah, one thing that happened last night, obviously Shoemaker going down, um, being in the sling, being out the rest of the game, it it was a a big unfortunate happening. Um, But one thing I can say is is Kime looked confident there. You know, like we said earlier, he had his first game jitters, um, had a few mishaps, uh, but he really looked poised and confident in that uh, that QB position. And with a whole week of first-team reps coming into this game, it really gives me confidence that going into the, the next game with the Raiders coming up, uh, that he's going to have a little bit more success than he did last night. So yeah, we we, we still don't know where uh, Shoemaker is right now. Um, you know, he may be good to go. He may it may be something just a bruise kind of thing. And so uh, we're we're not for sure that he's not going to play. Um, that definitely was a abrupt change. Third play of the game, your starting quarterback goes goes down, but. For Kime, that's valuable experience. That's trial under fire, and Shoemaker had to go through the same thing last year. Uh, it was the Northridge game last year that uh, Jackson Brown went down and, and Shoemaker took over. Um, so, you know, as a sophomore, getting some varsity playing time, you know, valuable playing time, not just mop up, but you got to go out there and perform, uh, That that's huge in the development of a kid. And so... Uh, you know, you, you hear people talking about the game slows down for him a little bit. Last night, it was the Indy 500 going right by him. <laughs> I mean, he, he he had guys flying at him. Uh, you know, he was getting hit as he's throwing. Uh, you know, he, he was trying to make plays and, and probably let a few balls go that he shouldn't go uh, thrown and that kind of thing. But it'll slow down for him. The more he sees, the more he does. And uh, ha- having that experience, uh, you know, if Shoemaker can't go, then uh, we're going to get him ready to go. And we also have Bontrager that can fill in uh, aptly. Uh, uh, a little different package for him, but still he's able to do that. Um, so, you know, we'll work him. We'll get him better, and uh, we'll we'll try to prepare him the best we can. If he's the guy, and if he's not, then we're going to prepare him the best we can in case that happens. You know, Coach, a little bit ago you you talked about how Chad Epley was a leader when he was a player, and, and you know, stepping up to to the coaching ranks and that it, it's been fun to kind of see. You know, as a, a fa- former teammate, as him kind of him step through things. How does you know? How does that kind of go fundamentally into his program uh, of his leadership? And that I, I believe he has the the tag. Why not us? I, I believe that was his tag for the yeah. That the was state the run. year they the first year. And, and how does how does things like that kind of help him? You know, I, I mean, brand new coach, right? Come in and, and set a, a foundation for that program. Well, he he wasn't brand new to the kids. He was an assistant in the program for a couple of years, and I think uh, you know. Uh, Tom recognized that continuation of, of a guy within the program that the kids can, uh, you know. Kind of rally around. Yeah, and, and a familiar face and, and heard that voice before and, and know what the expectations are. Uh, as a uh, former you know player uh, and you collect experiences along the way, uh, the way you were coached in high school and then the way you were coached in college and then his experience at Westfield, uh, and then as an assistant at Northridge. So uh, he's had a lot of experiences to put together. And, uh, you know, his personality, he, he's a hard worker. He's uh, serious about uh, winning football and, and doing the things it takes to win football. And, and bottom line is you got to surround yourself with good people. And he's he's assembled a – very fast assembled a, a pretty good staff uh, up there um, and, you know, they're well coached. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You look around at all aspects of the field, and and those kids are coached up, and the head coach can't do all that. And mm-hmm. so, um, you know, he's done a nice job of leading that program, um, and their success has shown, and uh, uh, the community's behind him. And so, like I said, we're going to have our work cut out for us on, on, on homecoming. Uh, we're going to have to execute a lot better, and we're going to have to – fight for four quarters and uh you know try to be as competitive as we possibly can and who knows 
you know, there's who knows what's going to happen. You, you just never know. That's why upsets happen and, and things like that. On paper, you know, they're four and one, and we're one and four. So on paper, it looks like uh, you know that they're the favorite team, and they are the favorite team. But whoever goes by the paper. So that, that's the message we're sending our kids. And, uh, uh, you know, we have yet to have that game where everything's clicking on all cylinders, and uh, this may be that game. And, and what better time than at homecoming? Uh, Tinky got the first his first start, at least that I'm aware of, at running back last night. Yeah. Um, played extraordinarily well in the game before. Um, given the circumstances, I think he played well in this position this past game. Uh Going forward, assuming, you know, he gets a start at maybe running back, maybe going back to receiver, whatever it may be, like how does he feel going into he, this? He did he did a little bit of everything for us last night. Um, I, I commented that uh, we used him last night like a rented mule. We used him for everything. <laughs> we worked him. Uh, he was returning kicks. He was making tackles on defense. He was playing running back. He was playing wing, wide out. I mean – he was doing it all for us, and, and that kid's a warrior. I mean, to the to the definition, um, just works hard, does things the right way, competes all the time, um, and we'll continue to do that. I mean, he's our guy. He is our dude, and so uh, teams know that, and they're going to uh, you know set up their defense to 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 be aware of where he's at and what he's doing. And so when he gets the ball, he draws a lot of attention. And, and uh, you know, sometimes you can use that to your advantage as a fake, but you also want to get the guy that's your dude the ball as much as possible as well. And so um, he's very valuable, um, you know, trying to keep him healthy. Uh, he's he's coming along just fine, you know, normal bumps, bumps and bruises. But, uh, Good to hear. He will be uh, continue to be a focal point on our offense and, and a big part of our defense, and we're going to try to put him in positions on both sides of the ball where he can make an impact. Same same with special teams. Um, he's just a very valuable dude and uh, great kid and uh, great work ethic. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning, Coach. Obviously, big game coming up with homecoming next week. I, I implore everyone to come out and, and support your Warriors in, the, in this homecoming game. Game starts at 7. Our on, on-air coverage will start at 6.30. Uh, that has been a wrap for this week's Coach's Corner Football Show with Coach John Ritabu. Join us next Saturday at 11 a.m. and catch up on previous Coach's Corner shows on demand on YouTube at CPGTV. This has been the Coach's Corner Morning Show on 93.7 FM, The Mix.